Hi everybody, I'm Jessica J and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, I have a YouTube channel that covers the topics such as urban gardening and a lot of the cooking that I do with the produce that we um, get from our garden. And uh, it's springtime, today is May 21st and we're going to be planting the garden this week. And I wanted to get out here and show you kind of like what a real garden looks like. And this is my cucumber patch, or it is going to be my cucumber patch. And it was a very beautiful cucumber patch last year. But right now you can see it is just weeds. And this is why I wanted to show you. Because sometimes on the internet, all you see is the beautiful, picturesque, gardens that sort of are maybe not quite in touch with reality, right? Just like a lot of things on the internet. So um, nothing good comes without some hard work and this beautiful cucumber patch that I put pictures of last year on Instagram and Facebook didn't just magically manifest. Uh, weeds like this like to try and take it over don't get out here and actually do a little bit of work in the garden. Now some people either hate weeding or they love weeding and I wouldn't say I love weeding but I've tried to kind of rethink or reframe I guess you could say about how negative weeding might feel because getting out here and weeding is actually kind of beneficial in lots of ways. It uh, gives me some much needed exercise. It gets me out in the beautiful sunshine, um, enjoying my yard. And it's kind of peaceful out here when I just pick weeds. I don't have to worry about much. It's Some people would even say gardening is a form of meditation. And I'm not really into meditation per se, but coming out here, weeding the garden and getting it ready in the spring I believe actually has that same sort of helpful calming effect and a de-stressing effect in my life. So I'm not really resentful that I have to come up here and meet today. I'm actually quite excited and happy and it just is relaxing. And I'm pretty lucky to have my husband help me in the yard today. And I'm just going to show you a few things that we're actually doing in the yard this week to get ready for the garden. So the first thing is weeding and when we have some fairly established weeds like these, which we probably should have got to, no lie, about three weeks ago when they were little. And because we didn't, they're large and they're getting quite an established root system already. I don't know if you can see those. So I mean it's only May 21st. And look at some of these weeds already. They're coming to blossom, which means they'll come to seed very, very quickly. And look how established those roots are. A lot of weeds like this, if you till them and cut these roots into chunks, that is just going to make like seeds for new weeds. So how would I explain? It's not that it's an actual seed, but if you cut this root, and leave it in the soil, a new weed is going to pop out wherever a piece of root is left behind in the soil. So we're actually going to spade this little section right out today before we till. Which I know seems like a lot of work, but it's quite a smart thing to do so that we don't just get a whole bunch more weeds coming back in a couple weeks. My husband and I are by no means garden experts. We both grew up on a farm and we helped our parents with gardens while we were growing up. So we're kind of lucky that way. We've got uh, perhaps a bit of a green thumb because we were exposed to uh, this sort of gardening lifestyle when we were growing up. And we have our parents and relatives for advice when it comes to helping with the garden. Um, but when our own children were growing up, we actually didn't even do any gardening at all. We used to be very much lake people but now that our children are grown and gone, we um, have decided we like to just enjoy our own backyard garden in the summer. 
instead of going away, it's this garden is sort of like our staycation. And um, we just thought we would share with you some of the things we do in the garden, which may or may not be the 100% best way or anything like that, because like I said, we're not experts, but we just want to share with you our garden adventures. So this part of the garden, we have the weeds under control in a lot better fashion than we did over by the cucumber patch. So this part of the garden, soon as the snow melted and the soil was defrosted enough to work, my husband came out here with the rotor tiller and gave it one rotor till over. Um, we are more traditional gardeners in the sense that we don't do no-till gardening, but no-till gardening seems to be coming up in popularity and is something we might try and learn more about and start experimenting with. In the meantime, we like to uh, work the soil in the spring and for a couple reasons, we feel it helps soften the soil but also helps suppress the weeds. But we do notice that even when we till, after we plant, within a month or so, the soil is getting quite hard anyways. And so there may be something to be said about no-till gardening because by the time our potatoes and carrots are actually forming root vegetable, the soil is quite hard anyways. So that's something we're thinking about re-examining the, the way that we do garden. In the meantime, we've got the weeds fairly under control here and we're pretty happy about that. And we're gonna be all ready to plant this area of the garden this week. We're gonna put in some carrots, some turnips, and some peas, possibly some cilantro and lettuce in this section right here. Maybe back in the corner there, a couple of zucchini plants. And we like to plant the things that grow the tallest on the north side of our garden. Right here we've got some asparagus that I was, uh, I made a video about our asparagus patch earlier this spring. And today something else I'm going to do is harvest some asparagus because if I wait even a couple more hours, this asparagus will be probably past the point of being able to be harvested because it's just perfect right now and asparagus grows so very quickly I could come back even just tomorrow and this might be into a fern already so I'm gonna get out here with a bowl and a knife and harvest some asparagus today right away actually as soon as we're done this video the reason we like to plant our tall plants on the north side of the garden is so they don't shade our other vegetables that are growing. Another thing I'm going to do today is come over to this patch of chives that we have and harvest as many of them as I can as well. So I've just harvested some of this asparagus and now it's time to harvest chives. When the chives are nice and tall and green but they start going to flower it's really time to get out here and start picking your chives if you haven't been using them already. I've been using them for a couple weeks now in salads and side dishes. But there's too many here for us to eat all at once. So today I'm going to harvest a bunch and chop it and just freeze it raw. Now when you freeze it raw and you take it out of the freezer, it might get a little mushy, but it's still great for adding to sautés and soups. So instead of just letting it all go to waste here, I'm going to pick a fair amount of it, chop it, and freeze it. And if you look right here, up close, these two little bunches of chives are some of the ones we've already been harvesting this year, but they will grow back and you can get lots of pickings of chives throughout the year. I pick them until they start getting woody and then I just leave the plants grow and even go to seed so they make a little bit larger chive patch every year and then I can even sometimes dig out a clump and give away some to a friend to put 
in their garden and these chives are perennials so you want to leave them somewhere where you're not going to be tilling because they'll come back in this spot every year which it's really really nice to have some early spring vegetables and greens out of your garden. These four little clumps that you can come see this is a different variety of chives. These are called garlic chives. These ones are onion chives. So these garlic chives, they have a garlic flavor. And those are really nice chopped up into salads and sautés as well. These little patches of garlic chives, I started from seed. And I'm not going to harvest them too heavily until they start establishing quite well. but. I'll be able to harvest quite a bit of this this year already and I think I planted these last year or the year before at the longest there's two more little bunches of garlic chives right there as well right here which I will have to get out and start weeding around them before the weeds take over the chive patches even my strawberries are starting to take over so we will get out here and dig around a little bit. But something we have noticed as gardeners is the less you disturb the soil, the less weeds are going to grow. So I am only going to take out the weeds that are obviously getting quite large here like these. But I might leave some of the strawberries growing right up close to the garlic or the onion chives. Because when I leave these strawberries here, they act as a ground cover and keep the weeds out of my chive patch. And that's my reasoning of having the strawberries right up close like that. And they don't seem to compete with the chives too much. Once they start growing right in the center of the chive patch, of course I'll pull those strawberries out. And another thing we're doing today is hardening off our plants that we bought ahead of time at the greenhouse. So come check that out. I'm standing right now underneath our deck. And this is a spot where I really like to harden off our plants for a couple of reasons. Down here, there's a lot less wind. And I find my new little plants from the greenhouse are really susceptible to being hurt or burned or even tipped right over or their little stems being broken by the darn wind. And another reason I like to come under the deck to um, harden off our plants is that way I can leave them in the sunlight for really only a very short time. So today is really the first day that they're coming outside and spending time in the real sun. And I'm literally only going to leave them in the sun for maybe half an hour and then pull them back here underneath the deck into the shady part so they can stay in the shade for the rest of the afternoon. I find my brand new plants, if I leave them in the sun too long, they almost always fry. So probably another reason being is in their little tiny pots, there isn't very much soil so they dry out really easily. So I like to keep them well watered. They've been out here for about half an hour so I'm going to give them a little shot of water just with a gentle spray and then I'm going to move them back into the shade and I had watered them even before we put them out and I could tell that the soil was already quite dry so I sometimes even set a timer when I am hardening off my plants so I don't forget about them because there has been times in the past where I've forgotten about them and came back and they're so totally fried they're, they're dead, they're, they don't come back to life. And that's always a shame. The pre-started plants are a little bit expensive, but this is about all that I buy for pre-started plants, so it's not so bad. And here I've got peppers and tomatoes, some basil and some oregano. And hopefully in the next week or two, once they're used to being outdoors, we will plant those straight out into the garden maybe even in a week. Oh, and I have these peat moss bales right behind them because the wind is coming from that direction. And these peat moss
moss bales are put here on purpose so that it's breaking the wind for the plants right now. So when you do harden off your plants, if you can put them in a spot where they're protected from the wind and a little bit of sun but not too much and you can sort of manipulate that environment for them to help them get used to being outside, then hopefully you'll have as good of luck as I've had in the past, well, except for the time that I fried my plants, that is. Today is May 21st, and around this time of year is when the leaves are coming out where we live. This is one of our apple trees, one of three. And something else we do at this time of year is get outside and uh, carefully inspect all the branches to see if any tent caterpillar uh, larvae are hatching. There are actual bands of eggs that the moth will lay on these branches and those egg bands camouflage really well right into the branches. But once they're getting ready to hatch, it's like that egg band swells a little and you can start seeing it. And sometimes I actually gently crack it off. And you have to do it quite gently so you don't damage the bark of the apple tree. Crack it off and throw it in the garbage or into the fire pit. Um, if you throw them down onto the ground, they're probably still gonna hatch and maybe be able to crawl back up your tree, possibly. When they're that tiny, they need to eat right away, so they may not be able to crawl back up your tree, but I don't take any chances. Another thing I do is if they're hatching, I just put on some gloves and I just squish them. I don't worry about using any chemicals because we are small scale backyard gardeners. If we had a large orchard or something, that would be different because it wouldn't be manageable to come out and start squishing all the bugs. But that is just what we do and we've had really good luck keeping the tent caterpillars out of our trees with just the squishing method. Today is May 22nd and we're still getting the garden ready. And my hubby is unpacking a few bales of peat moss and laying them down where we're going to plant the carrots. But first he'll probably rotor till here just a little bit more to work in some of this peat moss. The soil that we have here is very, very high in clay content. So we've been spending the last four years or so trying to remediate that a bit by adding compost. And we're worried if we add too much compost, we might make the soil too rich. So this year we're gonna add some peat moss. So that's what he's doing right now. So we're also putting some peat moss here where we're going to put the turnips and beets, I think. Another thing that I hope to contend with today is this sort of makeshift compost pile that we have going on here. And what we did in the fall is we put a lot of plant tops into this pile, including the old rhubarb tops, the potato tops, there was turnip tops in here. Those are asparagus tops. And it was actually quite a huge pile, but over the winter it's really come down as it's um, decaying, I suppose. And we've got sort of a makeshift compost pile happening here. But uh, one reason we've been hesitant to just make a compost pile out in the garden is uh, we were worried about attracting rodents. And my husband did find a mouse nest in here already this spring. So hopefully our plan is to get um, a compost barrel that spins on a stand because we do live in the city and we don't have a lot of space. If we were in the country or on an acreage and we could make a compost
compost pile quite far away from our house or neighbors, we probably wouldn't worry about it so much. And a lot of people use chicken wire or a little bit of a board kind of enclosement to just make a compost pile. Um, so I think today I'm going to turn this and just pile it up into a small little corner and maybe see if I can get it to continue composting until we get that compost barrel made. Um, another thing is I don't go very far in my garden ever without carrying around a five gallon pail because it seems it never fails that I find some litter on the ground. I don't know if that's because we live in the city and a lot of litter just happens to be floating around which is kind of a shame but I'm constantly picking up litter. And another thing, I'm sometimes picking up little tiny bits of plastic in my garden. Now, three years ago, we bought inexpensive plastic pea fencing, and we regret that, very much so, because the plastic um, sort of deteriorated in the sun, and by the end of the garden season, when we went to just roll it up and put it away, it all crumbled, and broke down into literally hundreds of pieces of plastic that littered our garden. And so we will never buy plastic, especially inexpensive plastic pea fencing, ever again. And in the meantime, we bought some of this chicken wire. So we attach the pea fencing to the stakes with some staples. And this is where we will plant our peas. And we like to put the fence up before we even do our planting. So that's what this is. My five gallon pail also comes in super handy. Every time I see a weed and I decide to pick it out by the root, I throw it into the pail and I actually throw away all our weeds into the garbage. Some people will put their weeds into the compost, but I'm sort of wary of that. Weeds are extremely resilient and hardy and unless your compost has reached a really hot temperature, I think the weed seeds and the weed roots even will perhaps live. So I'm not going to take any chances when it comes to propagating more weeds. I just want to get rid of them. So they're going to go into the pail and into the garbage. And I better get back and start picking all those weeds in my so-called cucumber patch. A lot of them are already starting to bloom. So they really need to go. Once those blooms turn to seed, then I will really be in for a disaster if I let the seeds hit the ground anywhere in my garden. So sometimes in the past, if I haven't had time to even come out and contend with certain weeds, I'll just break the tops off and throw the flowers in the garbage. And that'll help keep things under control a bit until I can get out here. Um, another thing I've noticed is after a rain it's a really good time to pick weeds if you want to pull them out by the whole root and all because after a rain the ground is nice and soft and it's much easier to pull weeds so my grandma used to have a little saying pull the weeds after a rain but hoe when it's dry and when weeds are really small and they're just coming up in the garden and it's a nice dry day don't worry about picking every single weed. Get out there with a hoe and just hoe in between the rows as much as you can and water your row of plants just with the hose. So just the plants are getting the water and the weeds aren't getting the water. And when weeds are tiny and you hoe them on a hot sunny day, it's hopefully going to kill them. And, and we've noticed that that works quite well. I remember when we first started getting back into gardening my husband saw some little weeds coming up in between the rows and he wanted to get out and hoe. And I said, oh no, no, I'm gonna get outside and I'm gonna pick all those weeds out by hand with the roots to make sure and get them. And then I got busy and I didn't get out here and those root, those weeds got looking like this. Like I said, it only takes a couple weeks and they're huge and pretty established. Maybe these started last year, I'm not sure because I really don't know how weeds can get so huge so fast. But then my husband was like, I told you so. And I thought, damn, he's right. And I don't wanna tell him that he is. So the following year when the weeds were just small and he said, I'm gonna go out and hoe, I was like, yes, do it. And then I actually went out and helped him hoe and 
man, we found such a difference. We were really able to keep the weeds under control a lot easier. So hoe on a hot day, weed, pull them out by the roots right after rain, keep after the weeds because in a real garden, you are going to have weeds and that's just life. But I hope you enjoy your garden as much as we do because it doesn't matter if it's weeds or eating the vegetables at the end of the season. Gardening can be super rewarding, super relaxing. It's extremely beneficial for your health and your fitness and your mental well-being and everything. I really just can't speak highly enough about how much our garden has brought us enjoyment in our life and helped create a yard and a place where we don't even feel like we need to take a vacation away from. Uh, this is our staycation at home and we love it. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to uh, type below in the comments. I have noticed lately on YouTube that on an iPhone, People can't comment or even view the previous comments, which I was quite surprised about. So if you want to see the comments or comment to me, you may have to go on a laptop. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed our video and my little garden tour today so you can see what's happening. And if you like my videos, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a really great day. See you.